Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Arroyo Don Juan, and I'm a third year aerospace engineering student. My name is Justin Asahan. I am a third year aerospace engineering student. My name is Angel Meza, and like the others, I'm also a third year aerospace engineering student. And my name is Giancarlo Datun. I'm a fifth year student studying aerospace and mechanical engineering. We're representing the mechanical and thermal analysis teams from the Space and Satellite Systems Club here at UC Davis. The Space and Satellite Systems Club is working to develop the first CubeSat from UC Davis with our RealOp mission. RealOp stands for Remote Experimentation and Analysis of Low Earth Orbit Phenomena. Our contribution to this mission revolves around simulating launch conditions followed by a transient orbit around the Earth to verify that the CubeSat will maintain nominal operations. To create these simulations, the mechanical analysis team uses SOLIDWORKS with launch data provided by NanoRacks and Antares, while the thermal analysis team uses Thermal Desktop. The mechanical analysis subteam is responsible for performing three different studies that replicate the movement experienced by the CubeSat during launch. These include the acceleration load study, the random vibration study, and the modal analysis study. The mission of the thermal analysis subteam is to perform heat transfer simulations on the 2U CubeSat using the AutoCAD add-on thermal desktop. With, with this add-on, we can perform transient analysis of the CubeSat as it orbits the Earth and taking into account the heat transfer that would occur. There are currently two immediate goals for the simulations. Number one, create a simple model to view the effects of conduction and radiation conduction being from parts that are in contact with one another, and radiation being from the sun, Earth's albedo, and internal components that give off radiation. Number two, compare the results from the simulations with hand calculations to make sure that components of the CubeSat are within allowable temperature margins. The purpose of the acceleration load study is to replicate the quasi-static loads experienced during launch. We applied two types of loads on the CubeSat. These included the launch loads, which came from the rocket, and the integrated loads, which came from the NanoRacks CubeSat deployer. According to NanoRacks, the g-forces that the CubeSat will experience will be 4g's along the x-axis, 7G's along the y-axis, and 4G's along the z-axis. Additionally, a 13.5 radian per second squared rotational acceleration load along the x, y, and z-axis. For the integrated loads, the CubeSat must be able to withstand a compressive load of 1,200 newtons along the z-axis. The conditions that were placed while running the analysis were fixing the rail ends in place to replicate the launch conditions and replacing the ADCS components with remote masses and FR4 material. We took a 1.25 factor of safety into account and calculated the maximum allowable stress of both materials. Our results show that the maximum stress experience from both analysis is two orders of magnitude smaller than the maximum allowable stress. We know that the CubeSat will not experience plastic deformation and it will survive the loads experienced during launch. Now moving on to random vibration study. A little bit of background in random vibration study is that it's monitoring the amount of varying amp power of the signal from the rocket onto the payload, which is our CubeSat model. Um, <clears throat> We have completed comprehensive study on the complete assembly of the CubeSat. We have also established a set of assumptions in order to create a working simulation model. Our first assumption is to input a dynamic nonlinear analysis using power spectral density data provided by payload launch, co launch company NanoRex. Power spectral density, power meaning root mean square, signal strength, spectral meaning the distribution over a set and density in the context of the frequency. Therefore, it is the study of this transient signal strength over a set of frequencies in the frequency domain. With this data, we also compiled two more, the other two assumptions. This includes the global component contact, which is a welding configuration between the 
the components and also the electronics and avionics within the kit within the CubeSat are treated as remote distributed loads onto the frame. Running the simulation, we produce three different set of simulation results of the strain response. In the GIFs, we have the strain response in the amplified scale in the X direction, the strain response of realist on the realistic scale on the Y axis, and the strain response of the amplified scale on the Z axis. We can see that the simulations SOLIDWORKS has obtained the strain response magnitude operates below the T6061 yield strength of aluminum in the plastic region, which then indicates that our CubeSat has a robust structural design against fatigue. However, the study does not end here. We're continuing ANSYS random vibration study verification. Right now in spring 2021 quarter, we've completed component verification simulation and further comprehensive analysis over the entirety of the CubeSat model will be in progress. The motor analysis was conducted using SOLIDWORKS and the purpose of doing it is to determine the overall deformation shape of the structure under different frequency loads. This allows us to determine areas of high vibration so that they do not impact the electronics of the CubeSat. To run the simulation, we would need to create two system assumptions that are the same as in random vibration, those being global contact <clears throat> and distributed loads, and one geometric assumption that is based on the geometry and symmetry of this structure. For the geometric assumption, there was a guess that two sets of nodes should be identical. The results verify the geometric assumptions, which show that modes two and three are identified as identical mode shapes and modes four and five are also identified as identical mode shapes. The table on the results section for modal analysis shows which image represents which mode shapes and at what frequency they occur. Next is thermal analysis. The thermal analysis study's purpose is to determine how the heat transfer effects on the CubeSat. Since the CubeSat is fairly small relative to the size of several other spacecrafts, our intuition tells us that radiation effects will not vary greatly across the CubeSat. And the primary concern will be keeping that heat around the components to ensure they remain in allowable temperature margins. Images of our analysis as a proof of concept model of that CubeSat can be seen on the results section at the thermal analysis row at the bottom of the poster. For this model, the entire structure is comprised of aluminum 6061-T6. However, this is not representative of the entire CubeSat and its materials inside. The PCBs and the other mechanical or electrical components will be different materials. Using hand calculations from a previous member, we estimated our low Earth orbit altitude will send the CubeSat approximately 15 revolutions around the Earth per day. This implies the CubeSat will experience highly variable heating conditions as it passes in and out of Earth's shadow and is then surrounded by the sun's radiation and the Earth's albedo. These finite element analysis simulations will need to be compared with hand calculations in order to verify similarities in our results. Subsequent simulations will be performed to compare how the integrated components of the CubeSat are affected by the presence or absence of insulation and surface finish on the frame. The maximum temperature ratings of each component must also be considered in these comparisons, such that our model can verify whether or not the full system will survive. As noted in the final bullet point, our future models will use the assumption that all power consumed by components will be released as heat. For our final section, we will go once again over our mechanical and thermal conclusions, starting with mechanical conclusion um, as Jackie's mentioned, the CubeSat structure will be able to withstand the quasi-static loads during launch with a factor of safety we determined as 1.25. From our SOLIDWORKS simulations for modal analysis and random vibration, they operate within safe le levels using NASA's CubeSat payload standards during launch. Now onto thermal. Moving forward, they, the thermal division 
we'll be refining our simplified model of the CubeSat in order to verify our intuition that the main goal is to retain the heat generated within this CubeSat using insulation, such that it may maintain operator temperatures for the electronics and avionics. These simulations will need to be compared uh, to hand calculations, as John Connor mentioned, and results of these analysis will help determine what kind of insulation and what type of surface finish should be used for our use. To close, we'd like to thank Professor Stephen Robinson for his continued support and dedication to the Real Lab mission. Additionally, we would like to thank everyone who donated to our crowdfund page, as well as the College of Engineering for awarding us during the gift day event. These opportunities for assistance in manufacturing costs would not have been possible without our media team as well from Space and Satellite Systems Club. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge the structures leads, Milena Tulimavave and Chris Hippolito for their support and leadership. We would also like to thank the rest of the structures team and Space and Satellite Systems Club as a whole for all of the hard work that they have put into this project. Without them, none of this would have been possible. And with that, we've reached the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time.